So I'm going back to my key points. Clinician discretion. There's no set of definitive rules for when to prescribe prisms. And there's various approaches. We talked about various approaches for horizontal prism and various approaches for vertical prism. But it's clear that you have to verify that there's no prism adaptation, no prism virgins adaptation before you prescribe a prism to your patient. And you only treat in the presence of binocular vision anomalies. But last, but most important, you only treat when indicated. Do you know that expression in America, if it ain't broke, don't fix? If something's not bothering your patient, there's no reason to prescribe PRISM. We only prescribe PRISM when the patient comes with astinopia. So what are points to consider when prescribing PRISMs? First of all, keep in mind Prentice's rule. Every PRISM diopter is equal to the dioptric power of the optical lens times the decentration in centimeters. So you can actually get a prismatic effect by doing decentration um, you know, with respect to the OC of the glasses without actually prescribing prisms that are ground in. Another thing to consider, if you're going to be prescribing prisms on a bifocal, we have slab off, which is base up prism, and we have reverse slab off, which is a base down prism. We typically put the base up prism on the most minus or least plus lens. And the idea is that we do that in order to even out the thickness. We don't want something to be extra super thick in a particular direction. If you do a reverse lab off, which is a base down, you put that on the most plus or the least minus lens, again, to even out the thickness. Contact lenses. Well, this is an interesting one. If you have a patient that really doesn't want spectacles, and really needs prisms. Well, what can you do? Can you help that patient? Well, if you, if you could prescribe vision therapy, try to do that. But if you can't help with vision therapy and you can't help with an addition lens, what can you do for this patient in terms of contact lenses? So this is a hard one because every time you blink, the contact lens kind of rotates in the eye and we need to find a, a method to stabilize the eye so that the prism is always in place. And the manufacturers really don't like to put prisms inside contact lenses because it, it makes them really thick and it makes it very difficult for the patient to handle the lenses in their eyes. So um, only small amounts can be prescribed and basically only base down. Can you think about why only base down? So only base down because that way it's thicker on the bottom. And so when you blink and the, exactly, and the lens is rotating, it'll rotate back so that the thick part is on the bottom. In fact, for toric lenses, using um, thin zones and prism ballast is a, a well-known um, contact lens stability method. So for that reason, base down is basically the only type of prism that can be prescribed in a contact lens. Well, is it really the only type? While I was preparing this talk, I found this case report treatment of horizontal binocular diplopia with prismatic contact lenses. And they did this with one case in which they, they created custom 3D printed sclera lenses, which allows horizontal prisms ground into the contact lenses. I actually consulted with one of the manufacturers. We have a Cooper Vision here in Israel. And I consulted with them about the prisms and they told me that it can't be done. And then I sent them this paper and they were like, wow, we didn't even know that could be done. So you should know that it's in the works and at some point in the future, it will be possible to put other types of prisms, at least on scleral lenses. Other points to consider, comitancy. Comitant deviations are deviations that are equal in different directions of gaze. Non-comitant deviations differ in the different directions of, the case, of gaze. In these cases where you have differing amounts of deviations in different directions of gaze, it's a problem because you don't know how many prisms to prescribe. Do I prescribe based on the downwards gaze? Do I prescribe based on the upwards gaze? Do I prescribe based on the straight ahead gaze? And what about when the patient's looking to the right and left, if there's an incompetency? So the most successful prismatic treatments are ones given to comitant deviations. In other words, deviations that are equal in different directions of gaze. Other uses for prisms that I didn't describe earlier are for head tilts. 
If you have a patient that walks around like this all day, so that can cause neck pain and that can be really cumbersome and uncomfortable for the patient. Why is the patient walking around like this all day with the chin up tilt? Because bringing the chin up makes the eyes go down in the socket. And that means that the patient has less diplopia and has a more comfortable feeling throughout the day when their eyes are looking down. So let's help them. Let's give them a base up prism in both eyes, yoked prisms in both eyes, so that the images go down. And that way the patient doesn't have to tilt the head. They can keep the head straight and see the object where it's most comfortable for them in the lower visual field. Appearances. Prisms are really ugly. It's really not aesthetically pleasing to have prisms in the eyes. We try, it's also very heavy and they also distort. So we like to prescribe prisms only up to 10 prism adapters in the spectacles. Otherwise you may wanna um, combine contact lenses and the prisms, or you may wanna recommend surgery. We try to split it up between the two eyes half-half. That way, aesthetically, it looks equal.